All right, brothers and sisters. So today we're going to be looking at a testimony from a ex-Muslim who converted to be a Christian and he was stabbed in the process. He was from Iran and he was stabbed. However, if you are a Muslim, you know that uh, if you convert to another religion, Muslims have the right to take your life. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's just in a book. That's just that's that, that's most that's being a Muslim. That's Islam. You know, um, so Ramin grew up as a Muslim, but after seeing the hypocrisy and corruption in the Iran- Ira- Iranian regime, he started searching for the truth. He discovered the gospel and was transformed by Jesus. When he shared his faith, Ramin was stabbed, but miraculously survived and managed to escape Iran. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to watch a video of his testimony. I have yet to see it, so I'm interested in checking it out myself. The first time I was able to actually go to the Shiite rituals where they beat themselves, and you have to have black outfit, which is a sign of mourning. And we used to beat ourselves on the streets, thousands of young people trying to earn points and please Allah that he would may have pity on us or forgive us. And more you torture yourself, more you get points. And hoping and wishing that you will go to heaven. So I was born and raised in Iran as a Shiite Muslim. I loved God as a young boy. And I always wanted to serve him and to love him. I was going to my cousin's wedding. Some of my relatives gave me a ride. And they had some alcohol, I didn't. And I was in the car. And I was so excited to go. And suddenly, as we are on the way, there's a checkpoint. They pull the car over, they smell the alcohol, and they took all of us out. They took us to a confinement, took all our clothes off bare naked. They start putting cold water on us and they start beating us with these big, thick cables. And they were mocking us and laughing at us. They throw almost 50 of us in a small room. We were choking. I was so angry. I was feeling humiliated, hatred toward the people who torture me unjustly in the name of Allah for something I hadn't even done. So they took us to the court with shackles on our hands and our feet. And I sat before a judge who was a mullah, and he began to judge us based upon Islamic laws. My family found some connections and they paid some bribe. They actually released us and we had to just pay a fine. But that was the beginning of a long journey. I began to question Islam. Islam that I was loving and serving. What kind of religion is this? That there's so much injustice. My mother said, no, Islam is good. Only these mullahs, this regime makes it look bad. I said, okay, fair enough. Then I began to do all my own research because before I would read the Quran, but just to earn points. But this time I began to read to see what actually Quran says. I saw so much bad things in the Quran. For example, Surah 9, verse 29, 30, Muhammad said that kill those who don't believe in Allah and in his messenger. Surah 5, 51, it says, do not take Jews and Christians for your friends because they are friends of each other. So imagine all these years, all propaganda in the school, we heard bad things about America, bad things about Israel. We heard evil things about Jews and Christians. And suddenly, my eyes are being opened that this is not from God, a God who made this beautiful universe the flowers and the birds and these beautiful rivers and mountains. This God could not be this cruel. Now I lost my faith in Islam, then I said, so So now what? Who is God? If there is no God, then what is the purpose of life? Who made this world? And if there is a God, then who is this God? I want to know Him. Shortly after that, many things happened in my life. I lost my father, my father passed away. As a result, I dropped out of a school. I left all my friends, I was isolated. And I was so broken, so hopeless. And I was crying out to God, God, if you're real, who are you? Our power was out. I had a radio that was working with battery. So I turned this radio because I was sitting in this dark room and then I came across a channel and somebody was talking about that he was going to commit suicide, to hang himself. And on the way, he heard this beautiful music. And he followed that sound of music and he arrived to this church and he heard the good news of the gospel, and his life changed. It was a glimpse of hope that began to shine in my heart. But nothing changed. Shortly after that, I heard again that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He came, that He died for me on the cross as a sacrifice, and then three days later, He rose from the dead. And if I believe in Him, I'll be saved. I said, that's a bunch of baloney. I rejected the whole thing. I said, how could God have a son? 
God doesn't have a wife. I could not comprehend that, that God would have a son and he would come and die for us. But one week later, I was so depressed and so sad and everything seemed dark and hopeless. And I heard the message again. So that day I had nothing to lose. And uh, very skeptical, I said, Jesus, I do not know you. I was told you're a prophet. Now I hear you're the son of God. I don't know who is telling the truth. I don't want to be a victim of religion again. But if it's true, I want you to show me. And the moment I say that, the heat went through my hand. I began to cry and weep. It's like somebody put his hand in my heart and yanked out all that hatred and anger and bitterness and Amen. depression because I hated the people who tortured me unjustly. That hatred turned to compassion. And I was so full of joy, so full of love. I went to my mom's house. My mom saw me and she said, what happened to you? I said, why? She said, your face is shiny. I told my mother that I um, became a Christian. I accepted Jesus in my heart. And she didn't have a negative reaction. And she was sick for many years. She had a pain that the doctor said you have to have surgery and she had so much pain. I had this confidence that if I ask anything in the name of Jesus, he will hear me. So I prayed for my mother and instantly pain left my mom. She never had the same pain, same problem ever again. Wow. And she was suffering for years and Jesus Christ healed her. Wow. So then I began to look for a Bible. I'm a Christian now. I want to see what Jesus said. I was told when I was a Muslim that Moses brought the Torah, Jesus brought Injil, which is Gospel, and Muhammad brought the Quran. But they told me the other two are distorted. They're changed, it's corrupted, so they're no longer valid. Of course they do. Only the Quran is the last revelation of God. But now I became a Christian. I want to see what Jesus says in Injil. So I began to look for Injil. And I went library after library, store after store, shop after shop. For three months I was searching. Finally, I came on the internet and I searched uh, for the word Injil. The link show up and I clicked on them, but then it said access to this website is prohibited. So the government blocked the websites that actually had the gospel on them. Uh, so I set a computer, I used the VPN and I said, convey the, the blockage and I click on the link and open all the books of the Bible. I just said, who are these people? Who is Timothy? I mean, what is Corinth, Corinthians? So I downloaded the, only the four Gospels and I began to read. I think I read the four Gospels in five days. I was so glued to this computer. And as I was reading, the first five chapters of Matthew made me cry because I saw these words that I had never heard before. Love your enemies and pray for those who hate you and spitefully use you. And I began to ask this question, why this book is illegal? There's nothing bad in it, it's all about love. And I saw Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life down for his sheep and introduced God as a loving father. I mean, all these beautiful, powerful words. I said, everybody should know about this. I began to copy the four gospels on CD. And as I was going out to the gym and on the street, I would give to people. After eight months of doing that, I was in a phone booth. I was talking on the phone and somebody, a guy came with a long beard and he began to stab me with a knife. Dang. After he ran away, I felt something warm coming down my face and my leg and I just touched it and it was blood. But that was the moment I began to feel for sure that it was not safe for me to stay there and God wanted me to leave. So one night I grabbed some clothes and I left. I went to the bus station and I got a ticket to Tehran. And then from Tehran, I came to the border of Turkey. And miraculously, God helped me to cross the border and come to Turkey. I'm a 19 year old boy. I don't have money. I don't know anybody. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Nobody's picking me up. There's no arrangements. But I had this peace that the same God who healed my mother, the same God who saved me, the same God is with me. I had this confidence. I met this Iranian guy. And I didn't say, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm a stranger, please help me. I just shared the gospel. And he said, well, I'm not a Christian, but I'm researching. I'm going to a church to see what they believe and what they say. He said, would you like to come with me? I said, of course. So this guy took me to the church. And then actually he gave me the first actual New Testament. I saw people rejoicing and praising God and worshiping God, music, guitar. In contrast to mosque, every time he went to mosque, he was weeping and crying and sorrow and sadness. After the service, the pastor came to me and he said, welcome, what are you doing here? So I told him my story. And he said, oh, praise the Lord. God has called you and he loves you and he has a plan for you. So somebody in the church took me to his house. God was so faithful to me, providing for me, protecting me. There were so many threats. So I was there for two years and 
I got a call from UN that you are accepted as a refugee. I arrived in America and I said, thank you, Lord, for a free country where I can freely worship you. After I finished the Bible study, I started a church for Iranians, began to reach out to Muslims. Iranians are left and right coming to Jesus. Imagine for Amen. all those years, we would go to the shrines of dead Imams and we would pray to these dead bones, crying out to Allah, to Muhammad for answer. And not even once Allah answered our prayer. But the moment I call on the name of Jesus, I felt this love, I felt his power, and it just he showed up in my room. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I must say, every time I hear a Muslim's testimony, it really, it really brings joy to my spirit. It really touches my heart. Why? Because you have to have faith to be a Muslim and convert. You have to. You abs There is no playing around when you're a Muslim and you want to become a Christian. There is no playing around. You absolutely have to have faith. Why? Because your life is on the line. It is legal in Islam to take your life if you leave Islam and become a Christian. So to do that, you have to have faith. You have to know that you know that you know. That's why I say all the time, like, Muslims that convert become some of the strongest Christians because they know there's no doubt in their mind, you know? And a lot of times they've had a vision from the Lord. They've had a dream from the Lord, visitations, visuals. Muslims that convert to, to be a Christian, they know. You, you get what I'm saying? It's, it's beautiful to see, man. It's beautiful to see when the Lord touches these people. It's beautiful to see that so many Muslims are coming to be Christians in Iran. Over 50,000 mosques have shut down in Iran. Okay? The Lord is showing himself. All glory is the Lord's. Hallelujah. All glory is the Lord's forever and ever and ever. Amen. Pray for Ramin. Hallelujah. And for more Muslims to come in into truth, to leave what they are in which is darkness, to come into light. Hallelujah. That's what we're praying for. Amen. Let me know what you guys think of the video. Hallelujah. God bless. Shalom.